Hey guys, it's Katie Hess with Tate and Bugs and thank you so much for joining us on this video today. Today is just going to be a little fun project. We're in the middle of doing our chicken house and I want to do a little extra project in the inside. So that's what this is going to be about. Sometimes there's just some items that speak to me. While other people might think it's trash or should go to the dump, I just keep it for a little extra longer period than I probably should. Cause I just think, oh man, someday, someday I'm gonna do something with that. And today's video is featuring one, two of the said items. Jared had an old trailer and these fell off of his old trailer. They are just the fenders for um, his little dump trailer that he had. And I was thinking, man, maybe I'll do like a, I was using them for like a chicken, like shelter. And then I thought maybe I'll do them sideways and do like a little planter or something. And then one day, Toby came out here and was sitting on them like this. And then it occurred to me, I'm gonna make swings. So I'm gonna make two swings to go in the chicken house. And we're gonna get on that right now. Okay, so for this first swing, we're gonna loop through the top and then tie them at the bottoms. What's even going on there? <laughs> Trust us, we know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> if you want to tie a knot. This is just so that we don't have to have four separate pieces of string. We'll just have two separate pieces of string and limit the knots. So for the first swing, we're not gonna do it like a traditional swing. We're gonna set it up like this so that Toby can sit in it like a chair when he's visiting with the chickens. And I'll swing this way, not like this. For this, we just got standard S hooks. I don't think they're necessarily weighted, rated for my weight, say. But, if we fall, we won't fall that far, right? It'll totally work for Josie, but it might happen to where I sit on it and the whole thing just snaps. So we'll see. So, cut that. It's working. No, it's working. I'm just trying to film myself do it. <laughs> you got it before. It's way easier with the right tool. How right tool is there? I have massive pliers. Jared said my little weak muscles couldn't handle these. So he brought me some leverage. <laughs> Big leverage. Oh, man. Boom. Oh, you are weak sauce. That is your prize. Do you think you're gonna like it? Yeah. Then you can hang out with your chickens all day, every day. Oh. All right, I'm gonna try it out. I wanna. I'm, it's only 140 pounds. I'm gonna sink the knots. Let's 
snap the strings. I know I look like 140 pounds. Yay! Contrary to popular yeah. belief, I am not. I feel like I'm For the second swing, I think we're gonna hang it further back here. And it'll swing like a normal swing like this. So we didn't have enough white string, so we had to improvise with a few layers of paracord. So Jared's just leveling it out. But guys, big. check this out. This is a big, it's a big, big boy swing. Oh. All right, so the next step is to make cushions. Yes, I know, it's a swing, it doesn't need cushions. But I like to do things extra sometimes. So I'm gonna make some cushions. Okay, it is another day. Yesterday I finished building the swings completely, and today we're going to make the cushions. So the only good thing about being a semi-hoarder is you basically always have materials to make stuff. So for a while there, me and Jared were addicted to getting any kind of memory foam we could find for free because we were using it to go camping in the back of the truck and we would lay it, cut it out perfect shape for the bed of the truck and go camping with the canopy on the truck. And now that we have two little boys, we don't camp in the back of the truck anymore. So now we have an overabundance of memory foam. So this is what we're gonna be using. We're gonna go ahead and measure and cut it to what we want it to be. Okay, so we chose this spot to put the swings in for now because if you go and watch our chicken house videos, you'll know that this portion of the chicken coop is going to be the future garden shed, but we're not gonna do that quite yet until we start building a garden. And so I just thought swings would be a perfect little addition for this empty little spot. If you haven't had a chance to watch our chicken house videos yet, go ahead and click this link above and that will take you to our very first episode of chicken house stuff. Okay, so for this first swing, I want the cushion to basically cover the entire length of it. And then for that cushion, I think I kind of want to make it, I don't know, curve up a little but not go completely from edge to edge. So I'll probably make this one a little shorter. Okay, so this is just at 10 and a half inches right here. I think I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so that it just fits right inside nice and tight. I'm using this little guy to cut the memory foam with. It needs a new blade, but uh, I keep this in my purse and I use it for everything. So if you don't have one of these, you might want to go get one. Handy dandy feature. This comes off and you can break off the broken tips with this like that. So to make the little covers for the cushions, I'm gonna use this fabric. It's a, just a curtain panel. I got it at a yard sale. Um, it was really pretty and I thought I would use it for something someday, so I went ahead and got it. Probably paid next to nothing for it, uh, but it's really heavy duty. It's almost like a canvas type of feel and I think it'll wash up really, really nice. So this is what we're going to be using for our fabric and we're not aiming perfect for perfection. We're just going to make a quick, quick, quick uh, cover for these cushions. And I definitely want these to be a cover and I don't want to put it on permanently because it is in a chicken house and I want to be able to wash them. So we'll see how this goes. I'd really, really like the split opening to be right in the center so that it's not hanging off on the edges or there's not exposed foam on the edges. I would kind of want to have one piece of fabric here and another one overlap like this. So then when you open it up, you can it'll be difficult to put these in, but we could put them in that way. That way we don't have chunks of foam hanging out on the outsides. And a quick tip for you, if you ever see curtains or sheets or any type of textile with a finished edge and you love the fabric, buy it because it will save you a couple extra steps uh, if you do it the right way. And along those lines, if you're going to be sewing a dress, a little girl dress, adult dress, anything with sheer, and if it fits in your pattern and if uh, you can find the right colors for whatever you're making, 
use curtains, sheer curtains or whatever. Like just go to Walmart, get the cheap, cheap, cheap ones and the edges are already finished and hemmed. You won't have to deal with anything. It's so nice. But then again, you don't want to go too cheap because you know, they won't have that same flow that you would want with a sheer fabric if you get like super, super cheap stuff because you do want that motion. But this is not a dress sewing video. So back to the swings. So hopefully I have enough fabric to do this because I really, really want to make my openings already have a hem so that I don't have to worry about doing that step. That would save me four separate hems. So let's see if we can't make that happen. I'm debating on doing like pillowcase style with one seam all the way around or cutting a top, cutting a bottom, and then cutting a strip all the way around. I think cutting a strip all the way around would make it look better. It would give it more of a, what do you call that? Um, front, uh, I'm thinking French cushion, Dutch cushion. French? French mattress? I don't remember. That's what we're gonna do. No, it's not. No, we're not, we're not gonna do that. It's a chicken house, so I'm gonna do it the easy way. We're just gonna throw it together today. Come time to make one, like a pretty one for the porch, I might do that version. But let's just do it the easy way today. Are you guys organized when you sew? When I sew, all the scraps hit the floor, all the threads hit the floor, I just kind of chuck it. And then at the very end, I sweep everything to a corner pick it up and throw it in the trash rather than try to stay tidy the whole time. What do you guys do? So guys, I'm definitely not a professional with sewing. I'm not a professional seamstress. I'm not a professional anything. I just really enjoy making things by hand and figuring things out as I go and just do my best to try to even reproduce something that I want to buy but is too expensive or just everything like that. And me and Jerry both really, really enjoy making things by hand and challenging ourselves with um, handmade type skills and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoy uh, this type of content and enjoy watching us and learning with us as we go, and if you guys enjoy that approach we take um, to our videos rather than tutorials type videos, because I don't know if we would do a tutorial type video on anything quite yet, but if you guys enjoy watching these videos that are based more on learning with us as we go, uh, make sure to drop a comment below and let us know so that we can keep making content like this. All right, now let's see if this works. So generally, I when I sew, I make everything pretty perfect and make sure I cut everything perfectly level or perfectly straight and smooth. But in this case, I'm just trying to throw it together really fast before Carter Lee wakes up so I didn't bother making sure everything was perfect and measured anything. I didn't measure anything other than measuring what size cushion I wanted. So when you do that, when you just throw fabrics together, you always just wanna make sure you get both of the layers. And so a little trick to do that, to save you a little bit of time, you wanna kinda of like, you can feel a ridge, like where the fabric ends, and then you just visualize where that fabric line is, and that is right about here. See, you open it up. So then you always just wanna make sure you hit just past that line. I told you, I'm taking a really lazy route to sewing today. And never mind all of my laundry in the background and my recycling corner. Real life, right guys? Real life. 
Okay, so we didn't pleat or tuck or round any of the corners. They're all just gonna probably be pointy, but let's see if this fits. Okay, this is gonna quite possibly feel like putting canned biscuits back into a can. thing about me like I like everything to be really tailored cor like tailored corners and everything to like fit flawlessly and this doesn't a little saggy in a couple spots and the edges are pokey and not tucked but I think that is gonna be more than sufficient guys that's the first time I ever made a I don't even know I bet these have a name these type of pillowcases like a split back. We're going to call it a split back pillowcase. First time I ever made one. I think it would look prettier and more finished if you did do the band all the way around. But honestly, it just doesn't look half bad. All right, so I'm pretty impressed. That went really fast. We're going to go ahead and slap the other one together and then we'll go try them on the swings. All right, just finished the big one and they are both completely done. The big one ended up being a little bit baggier than the small one. But that's okay because the big one was quite a bit trickier to get in there anyway. All right, let's go try them. Ready, folks? Let's try it on. I want it to be a little bit bigger so we can squish it down into the thinner edge. Girls, you're being so loud. So that was a super, super fun little project to do, and I'm in love. I love them. And I'm kind of, kind of... Okay, so that was a super, super fun little project to do. <laughs> I'm holding Carter, and he is just smiling so big. <laughs> and I just flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was a super fun little project to do. I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad. I am so glad that I saved those fenders for the last two years. Finally put them to good use. And now I'm just gonna have to keep my eye out for extra fenders just laying around on the road, because I love it. I can't really put some on the porch. So if you guys enjoyed this little project, make sure you subscribe to our channel, where we will be posting plenty more projects in time to come. But thank you guys so much for joining us, and I will see you in the next Thank you so much for watching.